Welcome to today's launch party called Creativity in Bloom. Today we're launching the new Die to Try series die that is sure to help your creativity flourish. You feel like you've been Hi quilters, I'm Lynn Gibney, AccuQuilt's Chief Brand and Product Officer. I can't wait for you to see this month's Die to Try. So let me introduce you to your lovely hosts for today, mm -hmm. Pam and Erica. Uh, thank you, Miss Lynn. Thank you, Miss Lynn. Lynn. It's You're good to have welcome. you here. I love your shirt. It's, oh, very, thank it's you. very springy. We were talking about that. All right, quilters, this new die is perfect for spring. And we've had such a wonderful time working with it. We have, and we have an exciting launch party for you all today. Now, as always, we've planned a lot of fun for you. We've got some fantastic prizes, stunning pr uh, project ideas, and wait till you see the gorgeous trunk show. All right, ladies, I'm going to go get ready for our experts, Marianne Fontana and Shannon Patterson, who will be helping to show off the new die in a little bit. So have a great show. Okay. Okay. See you in a bit. All right, I don't want to wait any longer. Let's share April's die to try. Let your creativity bloom with the Go Full Blown Tulip 8 inch finish die. This flowery Bach on board or Bob die features eight delicate shapes that are a breeze to cut, organize, piece, and sew thanks to the user friendly AccuQuilt system. Since this unique bob is fat quarter friendly, you can create vivid quilt blocks by effortlessly running the six by 24 die board through any Go fabric cutter and the studio fabric cutter with an appropriate adapter. Since this elegant bob finishes to eight inches, think about pairing it with other eight inch finish bob dies and compatible Go cubes to make lovely wall hangings, graceful throw quilts and more. Spring can always be in season with this beautiful bob because at AccuQuilt we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Tulips are one of the first flowers to bloom in the spring, so we just had to release this dye in spring as soon as we could. That's right. All right, Erica, let's jump right in and take a look at this classic block. Okay. I'm going to hold it. Actually, we're going to put it down here. We're going to, okay, let's put it, oh, there it shows there. up very nicely. All okay. right. So here it is. Now, like so many other blocks, there have been various names for this and various blocks with the name. Right. And this is ours, and I love it. Okay, so it's not, this is a classic block. It is very much so. So and it is not a direct, inter it is an interpretation of a tulip. Right. It is the classic interpretation of a tulip. Right. It is not an actual tulip flower. Right, if you want a tulip flower, we have a die for that. Right, it's called the Go Tulip. <laughs> yes, and right. it's an applique die, but this is a classic pieced block. Yes, this is a classic piece block. kind of gives block. you the look of the tulip is opened, and this is the center, yes. and there's the leaves. And typically you would do this like foundation paper piecing. Right, a lot of times you would. And this is actually known as a 4X block. And Lynn wanted to be sure we talked about this. Oh yes. Because we want you to be sure and see how you see this X lineup. So the four quadrants, we've got our four pieces, but you see this, this almost quarter square triangle like yep. unit. Now it goes together in squares, but you see this unit, yes, and you see that that definite X in the project. So that opens up even more creative options for you as right. you're working with it. And we have other blocks that are X blocks as well. You'll know when you see that line going mm -hmm. straight through it. So if you could yes. stitch in the ditch from corner to corner, that's your X block. Right. All right, so let's take a look at the die while we have okay. it down here in the Sounds good. on the board. Erica has put our fabric down already. I did. Okay, so first of all, it's on a six by twenty-four die board. It's going to fit through all of our cutters, including the Go Me. Make sure you have a six by twenty-four mat. Yes. Now, Erica, when we create these corners, we want mirror images. Yes. Now it's really important. We've uh, screen printed our letters. 
we've cut off the dog ears and have that quarter inch seam allowance, but you need to follow the pattern because some of the fabric is fan folded. Yes. And some of the fabric is facing. All right up. side up, that's right. Right. So it's important to read those cutting directions. Right. So A and A right. Mm hmm Okay, I think that sounds for a reverse, but I always call it right. Okay, well, it doesn't yeah, matter. either one. And whatever is easier to remember, right. I feel like, is the way to go. So these are unique shapes, too. We should point that out before yes. we cover them up. These are not shapes that you're going to find in any cube. So before anybody asks, these right. are all unique or shapes. Or any other die. Or I mean, any other die. Yeah, right, these are really unique die. shape. So the A and AR shape, because we have our reverse shapes here, all of our fabric needs to go right side up. Right. Okay. And the C shapes also need the fabric to yes. go up. Because they also are mirrored images. Now our B fabric and our D fabric actually needs to be fan folded. Right. Because so, you need a left and a right. That's right. So we've got our, um, and we're going to have four layers of fabric on every section. Okay. And you can look at the pattern. It's going to tell you how to subcut your fabric, and it's going to tell you how to lay out the fabric. Absolutely. And I love this fabric. Gina Jempasa designed um, this colorway, and I love it. And oh, this we is have Timeless a Treasures fabric for mm -hmm. before you ask. Yes. Timeless Treasures fabric. Okay. Okay. So now we've laid out our fabric. Yep. We're going to cut it on our go big. But remember, yes. you could use your go me. It's going to fit through all you of could. our cutters. You could. And I love this concept. So we talk about this a lot. Um, this is what we call a bob or a block on board die. Right. And quilters, that means all the shapes you need to make one eight inch finished block are on a single die board because you can cut up to six layers of cotton in one pass. And so you're able to create these blocks. So I'm gonna give it a little love. I'm gonna slide that mat, don't lift. Oh, and look, you've already look, laid out so our So we're gonna lay out a quarter of that for yeah. us. We had some pieces already done. There you go. So this block looks complicated, but when you look at the pieces, you're gonna see those dog-eared corners. It's gonna help to make that so simple to put together. And here, we need to start with our other pieces. Yes, let's do. Okay, and so remember, there's a left and a right. A left and a right, so. You wanna match those up. Yep. Then I can go ahead and get this on. Right. 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 Then we've got, I need an orange. Oh, here, let's get you an orange. And? Right there. Then yeah. we can get, now remember, we've got seam allowances here. Right. This is going to go in, nestle in And here. the way you're going to know this is see how these notches line up? Yep. That means you're putting them in the right place. Yep, yep. And then the green. Okay. Okay. We have and then the here. white. I've got so many demands. You really are, but it's okay. It's okay. Right? And again, you're going to see that these pieces are going to line up. I got to yep. make sure I'm doing it right. There we go. There, there. And we have a left and a right. And I'm going to tell you the easiest thing to do is exactly what Eric and I just did. Mm -hmm. We're going to lay out a whole block. Yep. And then we're going to follow the instructions on how to sew them together. Right. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to sew this half together. Uh-huh. And follow the pattern. So I sew all the lefts first. Exactly. And then sew all the rights. And then you're going to um, sew them together. Here's our big tip. Press those seams open. That's right. It's just so much bulk otherwise. Right. So there's great block assembly directions. You can find those on the package, but you can also find them on our website on the product page. And that even includes a coloring page to help you plan out your box. And on that same page, you can find a video that Eric and I made showing you how to sew this great block together. Again, along with some of our tips like pressing your seams open, make a test block. We say that all the time. Sure. And the way you're going to know that your pieces line up is that those corners and notches mm -hmm. are going to, um, dog ears are going to match. Yes. And we have something new on our website to help you with pressing seams open. Okay. Erica can hardly stand it. I can hardly wait. It. I have been dying to reveal this in detail. So we're even going to unwrap them. 
Okay, this is how they would come to Look you. Look at our go green our packaging. Our go green packaging, I okay. love it. Um, we have new clappers. We do, these are quilters clappers, and I have the 12 inch. Pam has got a hold of the eight inch. Those are our two sizes. Hey, who does this? Who puts the wrapping around them? I love um, this. I think that our, our manufacturer does, and Look you know what's this. really cool about that? These are made for us by a local craftsman here in the Omaha area. Yes. And they're solid maple. Yep, they're as smooth as can be. So smooth. They are, um, you can see how they've, they're kind of concave on the yep. side so you can grip them easily. And they're fabulous. Look at that, I love this. Okay, so Erica's been super excited, so let's show I everyone how you would use a clapper. Okay. So we have a block that needs to be We have a pressed. block over here that needs, yep. Okay. Hold so, please, I'm gonna move my blocks. Okay, our favorite way to do this is with our wool mat. Yes. And we would take our little iron. Yes. And press this down. Now, Pam and I are anti-steam. No people. steam ever, ever, ever is but involved. If you use steam, whether you use it or not, the coppers are gonna work great for you. So you're gonna press that out with your iron and then set you your clapper set on it. Set right there. And it is going to and I do not sit and push on it. I don't do anything. I just no, set I it down. No, I saw all their blocks while and my clapper is working. That's right, while my clapper is working. Okay, we'll do it this way. And then it's going to absorb the, the heat. Yep. And it'll absorb the, the steam if you've used it, but it'll absorb the heat. You're going to get the flattest seams ever. And, I mean, this... This little piece of equipment, this is a game changer. It is, and we need to have the seams flat on this because otherwise you get all of this bulk, That's which right. you don't want. So, okay, I'm gonna tell you that my favorite size is the 12 inch. Yes. Right? So, why are, if you're having to choose. Now, I also use the eight inch for smaller right. blocks. I like, actually, I personally, I think you need both. Okay in your life because if you're just pressing out your units, okay, if I'm just pressing out this unit, that eight is perfect. Yeah. And then I can have one or two even underneath my 12 while I'm I'm chain, yes. chain piecing and chain pressing. Chain pressing for days. But when I'm doing a whole block, I like having the, the little bit bigger okay. space. They're on the website. Throw yes. some in your cart today. Yes. Okay, I love them, and I love that they're local. Yes, they're local. local. They have our, they're, they're branded. I love it. Okay, and they come in such pretty tissue paper. <laughs> they do. It fits with the theme today and everything. So pretty. All right, now that we've taken a look at the die, we've seen our new clappers. Yes. Let's talk about the experts we have for us today. Yes. Uh, today's show, we've challenged Marianne Fontana and Shatter, Shannon Patterson to let their creativity bloom and see what projects they are ideas they have using the Go Full Blown Tulip 8-inch finish die. That's right. They are so clever, both of them. Both of them. Different backgrounds, like Shannon has a mechanical engineering background. Right, and right. Marianne has a creativity background, but they make amazing things. They do. Now, Marianne is going to be pairing the Full Blown Tulip die with the Go Cubes. And she's a self-taught sewer, quilter, and textile artist who started sewing at the age of eight. I feel like that must be a really... Um, eight... Eight is like that, a really sweet spot for people to start yep, learning. Yeah, that's when Oakley sew. started, yep. really. She is not only an AccuQuilt expert and designer, but also an award-winning quilt artist. She is. Marianne creates and sells her own quilts, patterns, and other textiles on Etsy. She produces free educational quilting videos for YouTube and volunteers her time to both the Giving Doll Project and Quilts of Valor in Delaware, where she designed patterns and volunteers to free motion quilts all the quilt tops they produce there, which That's is right. such a great thing. It is. Now, Shannon is going to be using other bob dies for her inspiration. And she's been crafting since before she could hold a pencil. And finger paints were the start of her passion for color and creating. Her love of quilting has persisted for over 25 years, including long arm quilting, machine embroidery, English paper piecing, applique, and drafting her own quilt designs. She does it all. She does. Shannon recently retired, congratulations. Yes. She enjoys bringing her understanding of manufacturing into her quilting, 
all while ensuring quality workmanship. Shannon recently moved to the Great Smoky Mountains yes. just outside of Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Boy, think of the South, Gatlinburg, yeah. with her husband Jim and their dog Barney. <laughs> okay, I cannot wait to see what ideas our experts have come up with. So let's jump right in. Marianne, what do you have so far? Well, hello, ladies. I am delighted to be here again, as always. It's so much fun to hang out with you guys and create new designs from the blocks. Well, I love this full-blown tulip, and I have to tell you, I see flowers everywhere. But let's go and look at the die for a moment. It's very simple. There's only four shapes that you need to worry about, and it goes together in such a clever way. I'm just thrilled with the block and the designs I can make from it. So the first thing we always do, as we say to you, is we will make a test block. So this is the one I designed, and I made my test block, and it just came out perfect. The pieces fit together beautifully. And what do you make from it? I said, well, let me go, and I, you know everybody likes to use EQ8, so I took a few, and look, I can just put this, this is just the one block, on a row, straight, four by five, that's it, and it makes a great design. And then I actually did one on point, which, and I like the white open spaces, and I put setting triangles around the corners. So that is one design I came up with, the full-blown tulip. And then I went, and all I did was change the colors, and I came up with a totally different look. I really like the blue. So what can I make with the blue? Well, there is the block, and I put a couple different designs together. The first one is just putting the block together with just, you know, as I said, four by five, again, the same pattern, and the rest of the three I've done, I've put sashing, and all I've done is change the color of the sashing to get a different look. Now, if many of you know me and know that the patterns that I design, I do a lot of work with quilts of valor, so I always try and throw a red, white, and blue one in somewhere to make it so I can see what I can make with it. I really like the design and the red, white, and blue, and I've come up with about four different groupings, and I've basically just taken, put six in the middle and put a border around it and made a border with the full-blown tulip on those first two. This has just got sashing on it here, and then I put these on point and put a lot of blue spaces in there, and I really like that one the best. I think I'm going to make one of those. And then the last thing I did, now I know I'm supposed to be working with a uh, cubes and I will and my finished project will be a cube but I've been having so much fun just designing with this one shape I did it in black and white and it looks totally different it's the exact same one I just changed colors on it and look what happens when you just add a pop of color all of a sudden it changes again I put a little red here a little red there these are the two I just showed you at the first and then all I did is throw a little bit of red in and it makes it really unique one of the things I've discovered about this block is there are so many variations. I don't have to try to cut the block in half, come out with another design, put other stuff with it, because I can make all of these designs just by changing the color. But I forget, my challenge is to use a cube. So you're going to have to wait and see what I put together and what designs I used to make my full-blown tulip with cubes. Stay tuned. All right, so Marianne did some really clever she things. She really did. Starting with a test block. I love the pink and the green. I did too. I thought that was so pretty. So when you look at the block in the pink and green colors, the way she had it, I think you see that tulip inspiration yes. Yes. a little bit stronger. Yes. So yeah. she had great ideas. She had great things She's she came EQ8 up with. and different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see. All right, yes, it will. I know. All right, after seeing Mary's and Mary Ann's inspiration, I think we should give away a gold full blown tulip eight inch finish die to a lucky viewer who registered for today's show. Grand idea, Pam. All right, quilters, our first lucky winner of a go full blown tulip eight inch finish die is drum roll, please. It's Contessa B from Atlanta, Georgia. Congratulations, Contessa. You're going to love this die. All right, so as always, Marianne came with some fun, really looks, yes. really cute looks for the full-blown tulip, didn't she? She really did. And she really, it really changes up this block with sashing. I mean, it's yes. amazing what a difference it makes. So here's, so here, here's oh, our let's block. get our gray mat. It's easier on our and gray mat. And when you, when you change up your overall design, adding that sashing makes a big difference. So let's look at some, some chunky sashing here. 
cute Gina used our green, our go green yeah. fabric, so it's hard to see on our green mat. So sashing is going to be the fabric between the blocks. So we'll show you. We'll just lay this out. Yep. So there we go. Yep. But cornerstones, okay, you want to talk about cornerstones. Yeah, I so know. cornerstones really make the treatment, uh, it really changes it up. So if you're not familiar with the term cornerstone, we're talking about the small or even in this case, not so small square where the sashing meets. Now, if you cut strips of fabric that are one and a half inches wide. Oh, wait. That, oh, there we go. Look at oh, Erica did this. Do, we can do this. We can do this both sides. Both sides. Um, then you want to make sure that finish to one inch, you want to make sure you cut a cornerstone that's one and a half to finish. Right. But if you're using two and a half inch strips, then two and a half inch cornerstone. So whatever size sashing you use, that's the size the cornerstone has to be. That's right. Now with wider sashing come even more design options. So we have, we know this is a two inch finish square here. Right. So what about using a solid square like we did here, but right. how about grabbing your four inch cube and making a cute little Look at block. that. And look what a difference that makes. You could totally make it in these colors. It would be super cute. Right. I really love that. If you didn't want the pinwheel, you could try a square on point unit right. and put that up there. Again, look a totally that. different look. Look how well, look, it just really accentuates the design. Now you could also use the four inch cube to make a tiniest little pinwheel block. I think we have one over there. We do, we do. So look at this. Look at that. And where's our quarter? This Here's is my favorite quarter. thing. This is our favorite thing. Look how tiny those Look are. Look how tiny. There's so a this is going to finish to an inch. Yeah. Look how cute that is. All right, so Erica, what happens when you put that block on point? So we have another block. We do. Right here. We do, okay. So let's just take our sashing off and we'll just okay. put them on our table here. Yes. So when you change this up by putting them on point, Again, you change how the block looks. Right, and you would use our eight inch setting triangles. Is that right? That's Erica? right, that's right. Or you could use, again, don't forget, you could use sashing. So we could have sashing in between those. Listen, there is no dye police. You can do that's whatever right. you wanna do there. So you've got so many Look options, so many options around. Keep this, this configuration in mind. You're gonna see it later. But there's so many different things that you can do with it. All right, and then what about color, Erica? Oh my gosh, you can do so much with color. And we saw just in the few examples that Marianne showed us what you can do with color right. and how different that block looked, how different the pink, the two pinks and yes. the green looked compared to the black and white. And she said, I think she made 20 different, 20 blocks, different blocks coming up with just color. I think that's what she said. It is. All right, now, especially since different colors of tulips, did you know, they symbolize different things. You know what, that's what you said. I didn't realize that. I for example, that with roses. Yes, well, tulips the same. For example, pink uh, is for happiness and confidence. Okay. And yellow for cheerful thoughts. We need some yellow tulips. I do love yellow tulips <laughs> and match yellow daffodils. And pink ones and white ones. Yes, all the colors. Okay. I also like the idea of using this block as a medallion project. Mm -hmm. um, one block or maybe a group of four turned yes. on point, um, surrounded by other blocks made with your four inch cube or your eight inch cube, it would be stunning. I loved her example that had the triple border, it had the red, white, and blue oh, border yes. around it. Yes, That was really stunning. And my quilting brain is thinking about ideas even now, and the four and eight inch cube shapes are both gonna be sized perfectly to work with this. So. Right. It could be as simple as alternating full-blown tulip blocks with another one of our 216 mix and match blocks. I mean, you're really only limited with this dye by your own imagination. Now, after exploring more ins from inspiration with cubes, I think we should see how the full-blown tulip dye works with other block on board or bob dyes. Shannon, what do you have for us? Well, ladies, this block blew me away. There are so many options with how you place your fabric. And in this case, I've continued using Electric Quilt 8, EQ8, and I um, auditioned some colors in the block. You can move things around, make the negatives positives, positives negative. I have 
threw some blocks together here. Here's a really scrappy random where I just threw all the pieces around and changed it from a tulip to this spinning sort of nautical theme. Um, this one, I just reversed the sets of blocks and I came up with X's, X's and O's for tic-tac-toe. Um, again, just alternating blocks, all the same color. Had to throw in a little something for Mardi Gras or in my case, a love for Halloween. And then because I just loved all of them, I threw it together into this little wild design. Not sure I'm gonna do this, but it is cute. But the inspiration for the direction I'm going in really stems around the Pacific Northwest. Right now, here in April, um, is the Skagit Valley Tulip Festival, and it is one of the eight rated tulip festivals in the world. They planted tens of millions of bulbs, and those are all popping up right now. Uh, the thing about the Pacific Northwest, it rains, and so I know that Mother Nature is going to decide when those bulbs come up, but some of the prettiest pictures I've seen of the fields included the overcast rain, the grays, and I'm going to take that and incorporate that into my project. So come back and see what I've come up with. Okay, those are fabulous. Oh I've my gosh, we're sitting, here watching. we're sitting here watching. Okay, first of all, for the win, she made me a Halloween version. Yes, she did. So good job, Shannon. And Eric and I lived in the Seattle area. I grew up there, Eric lived there for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. We know exactly what the Skagit Valley Tulip Festival Been looks there. like. In there, it's gorgeous. Yeah. And I think it's so cool to like make the X's and the O's and we'll talk about yes, that here. In yes, yes, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But before we look more in depth at what Shannon did, I think we should give away another Go Full Blown Tulip Die to a lucky viewer who signed up for today's show. All right, quilters, our second lucky winner of a Go Full Blown Tulip 8 inch finish die is, drum roll please. Tracy S. of Winchester, Kentucky. Congratulations. Congratulations. I wonder if Tracy's going to Paducah. I don't know. She should be. All right. We were both blown away by the tic-tac-toe yes. block. So we have to take a look at how she did that. We have that. some pieces here. We have pieces. Here, let's do our gray mat. Let's do. Okay. Okay, so she did her O. I thought this was so <laughs> clever. <laughs> too. We, so clever. We like, couldn't wait to, to lay out the block and pieces and And if you were making your X and O's, what, what, how would you, what color would you make, Erica? Well, I don't know. She did black and it yeah. really jumped out. But yeah. then she did her X. So she did her X. Wait. Yes. And okay, we're going to get an overhead camera here in one yes. sec. Got to give me a minute here. It's okay. It takes Erica a hot minute because the greens all match in the, the middle. The greens all match in the middle. There you go. So there's our X. Look at how cool that is. Isn't that cool? So then it would automatically, you start like this, it's automatically going to come up with that O yes. next to it. So yes. it's just super cool. And if you put, then if you wanted to separate it. Put a little sash. Where's my little narrow oh, sash? Right here, piece. right here. Hold on. So if you wanted to Please. make it look really like a. I don't know where it is. Tactical game, she stole my fabric. Oh, here it is. We take a little narrow. We have I more. That later. We, we have more. And put that black, it'd be like your grid. So Isn't fun. Isn't that so cute? It's so fun. I want to make All right, that. I'm taking these back because we're going to need a miter. All right. Now, I just think that gives such a whimsical twist to this classy block, right? Yes, yes. Now, we sh challenged Miss Shannon to work with our full-blown tulip block with other block on board dies, which means all the pieces are on a die right. board. And some of the other eight inch finish blocks were of course a natural and easy place to go, right? Right. And you had one you started off with right yeah. off so your the quilting head. So the first one I wanna think about is this one. And this is Go Winding Ways. Um, it finishes to eight inches. And I wanna talk about this die because both Eric and I have a really soft spot for this die. We do. We both made it last year. Mm -hmm. um, so this is such a great die because it has these curves, but we want to show you these notches, mm -hmm. and the notches match to the That's other right. shapes. So what you want to do is you want to cut your pieces and then pin them at the notches, yep. and it's just going to lay perfectly because you've cut them on the lengthwise screen. There's no need to panic about sewing curves because the, no. our dies make it so easy for quilters of any skill level. Yeah to really jump right in and sew those curves. So winding ways that will fit in your go and your go big. That's right. All right, so you're not only gonna get the accurate cuts, it's got the dog-eared corners, but 
It's so easy. It's so easy. Now, the first one that I thought of was actually the Go Weather Vane. Oh, look, it matches and my shirt. It, it does. <laughs> and it also finishes to eight. And I think that we've got a lot of possibility. Yes, we'll here. hold it down here in just a second. Because yeah. look how pretty this, look, all of you should be making weather vanes for <laughs> you spring. You should be. It's okay. so pretty. So I think that I can see a lot of, a lot of possibility mm -hmm. with this. I like the design. The little secondary. Yeah, yeah. Look. So we've got fun things going on here right. with this. And you could rearrange your fabrics. You could do some really fun things with this. Right. And don't forget our weather vane die. It makes it look like it has Y seams. It has no it has Y seams, no y none whatsoever. Okay. So I love this box. I love this too. But I came up with one more option with oh, a glorified nine pack. Only imagine. All right. We know that you love this die. Yes. But have you forgotten that it finishes to nine inches? So we're. Uh, lay it I down have here. not forgotten, and I'm going to show you two different ways that we could work with my glorified nine patch block along with this die. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the first would be to take narrower sashing than this. So cut it at one inch, so okay. it would finish at a half an inch. Put it on. All around, oh, all around the full blown the full tulip. blown tulip in your background color that would expand it, mm -hmm. and if that color was matching one of the these one of these colors, your background color here, it would just perfectly frame it out. It would. But there's another way we can do it too. Okay. Okay. So if we want to break apart our pieces, so this is going to be okay. We have to start. We have to start at the very beginning. We do. We've got to start back here. Okay. So instead of, we're going to go like this. Are you going to put Where's sashing in there? You yes. Go. I'm just asking. Look I at know, this. Okay, I know. look, I love this because they both kind of come to these points. Oh, I had this little square. Right? And there's yes. seam allowance involved. Okay, so I'm going to fold this in quarters. Where's your little blue square? I don't know where my little blue square okay. went, but we'll, we'll fold this one down. We shall okay. use, we shall be creative quilters and use our imaginations. There we go. Look how different that makes it. But if we cut one and a half inch strips, yes. that's gonna take it and move it from an eight to a nine, right. which is gonna work perfectly with my glorified nine patch. I think that's fabulous. Yeah. So think about all the nine inch blocks, like right. the starry path and the tangled star. It opens up even more oh, possibilities yeah. for you on how to work with it. And um, this die, just like our winding ways, has notches, so it's going to make cutting curves a cinch as well. That's right. Don't be afraid of those curves. Don't be scared of curves. All right. Well, now that we've looked at all of this, I really want to see what our experts oh, yes. have come up with for their final project. Mary Ann, what do you have? Okay, ladies, so here it is. This is my challenge piece. I call it my tulip medallion wall hanging. It's on point, and it consists of eight tulip blocks set around a center block which is made from a four inch and an eight inch cube. This is the center block and it finishes at eight inches just like the tulips do and I have used shapes one, two, and eight from the four inch cube and these are also shapes uh, two actually it says one but it's shape two from the four inch cube and then shapes four and five from the eight inch cube to make the flying geese and that is my center block that I've used put on point in addition I've added several of the eight inch finished blocks and then of course since it is on point I went ahead and used my eight inch setting triangles and I hope you like it it's called tulip medallion and again it's made with the four inch and the eight inch cubes for the center block with the full-blown tulip surrounding it I think it looks cool I hope you'll make it it's so much fun. Happy quilting. Okay. That was brilliant. That was very, again, we were back to that medallion mm -hmm. concept, but yep. differently than she had used it right. earlier. Right. And I love that she used the four and the eight inch cubes together mm -hmm. to make an eight inch block for the center, those eight inch setting triangles. Right. And the colorway, right? So it makes yes. it look like it has a scalloped edge. Right because she used different colors. You almost saw curved edges yes. where in fact we have no curves. There are no curves. So there are no real curves. I mean, you're sewing straight lines, but yeah. we're getting the look of curves. And I yeah. love how that was accentuated. 
All right, I can hold, I can hardly wait. Shannon, what have you made for us? Yes. Hey quilters, what a fun project to work on. So because this is an eight inch block, I elected to pair it with the eight inch block, the block on board weather vane. And as you can see here, I've created a daffodil. So what I did was took shape A and then filled in the two corners here to give that classic shape of a daffodil with the center, paired it up with my tulips, added a little rain in there to celebrate the Pacific Northwest, as I mentioned earlier. And what I've come up with here is spring bouquet. I really love it. Batiks are so much fun to work with, and I hope that you enjoy this as well. Okay, she won our hearts she because she did. took daffodils and tulips and batiks. And batiks, I'm yes. working with some batiks. Okay, so let's look here and let's we'll get our Let's look at how overhead. she did this. So she used, she had her yellow for her petals. Right. And, and for then, the bottom, she had the leaves. So right. she used the green here and just background fabric. But then she used her background fabric. She cut more of this yes, solid square yes. and substituted them. Yes. So clever to make the flower shape the really little daffodil. Little daffodil, daffodil really jump and out. And this is one of the great things about bob dies, right? Is that mm -hmm. you can look and say, oh, this shape is the same size as this. Right. I I can either make it solid or I can make it look like the weather vane. That's right. Oh, quilters, I have no idea how you're gonna decide, no. but we wanna know which expert project was your favorite. Was it Mary Ann's Go Tulip Medallion while hanging, or Shannon's Go Spring Bouquet while hanging, or did you love them both and you just cannot decide? I think that may be it. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you're watching on the event page or from YouTube, you can click on the vote box below or to the right of that chat box. And if you're watching by Facebook, vote from the box that displays over the video. There you go. Now, while you're voting, while you're thinking and you're voting for your favorite expert project, we want to get into today's trunk show for some more inspiration. Lynn, can you give us a hand? Oh. Absolutely. And here she is with our first sample. Here's the first one. This is the go field of uh, tulips while hanging by our good friend Gina Jempasa of Gem Hill Quilts. She used timeless treasure fabric. This is the pattern on the packaging. Yes. And this is the pattern Eric and I made a video about. Yes. So here she's, we've got that block on point, yep. like we were discussing earlier. And she's put the sashing and the cornerstones right. between them. Okay, so let's talk about this because this half block yes. is brilliant, okay? So what Gina did was, here's one of the corners. Right. Right? Did we get them the right way? Oh, we did. We, did, we didn't. How many hands do we have? Yeah, there we go. There we go. There, and it's gonna run here. <laughs> And it's gonna and she's run. She's kind of holding here. it up with her elbow. We have the, and the other orange, but it's okay. So what she did was she took the elements from creating this unit, right? And she used them here on the side. And I thought that was brilliant. Yes. Right. So it really because it has that X construct that X basis for it. You can do that. You can take those mirror images apart. You can mm -hmm. make a half block on the diagonal. You can do, it just opens up all of those creative options for you. She used a few, a couple of setting triangles here in the corners, mm -hmm. which I love to see. Lynn, what do you love about it? So the color choice is really great. Uh, you, picking the um, orange for the binding mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is a great choice, really makes it pop. And I think, did you say this, but this could be an example of an, a medallion quilt. Right. Um, or you could you could size it up as well and make it a, a nice size uh, throw or a right. queen size quilt right. too. You could also just create table runner with it, mm -hmm. you know, um, and just add those setting triangles. I love it. I think it's beautiful. And I love the quilting on it because mm -hmm. the quilting is like stems and leaves. Yeah, I'm gonna flip around to the back so you can see right. better. Oh, look at how pretty that is. Yeah, it's very pretty. Well done, Gina. Yes. We love that. All right. Really nice. Keep this keep this uh, quilt in your in your quilting head as we go through. The next one we've got up is the Go Tulip Tiles Throw Quilt. And this one is by Ellen Alt of Handmade 3D. And Ellen's used Robert Kaufman fabrics for this. So this is Shannon's X's and O's, mm -hmm. right? 
So if you were creating this, you could totally change up the colorways and your right. X's and O's would be different. Right. But I love the colorway here. It kind of looks like chain link fence. Mm hmm right? Yeah. It's that ombre of the teals in there and that, that cheddar color just pops. It definitely does. Cheddar. That's, That's an great. old quilting. Yes. Wow, yeah. I love that. But it's 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 because there used to be cheddar and white quilts, right, Lynn? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very popular. With these colors and cheddar. And I haven't thought about that in a hundred so years. So modern. Yeah. Yeah. But really, it's a very classic color to include with a block. Cheddar. If you really wanted to get creative, you could add applique to the centers. Right. Oh. oh, I thought this looked very nautical as well, like mm -hmm. um, a life preserver. Yes. So you could use nautical fabric and then you could use from our nautical medley, like the ship's wheel. Yeah, yeah that would or be the fun. the anchor. Yes. Yeah, that would be great. That would be fun. Red, white, and blue. That I'm still thinking cool... about cheddar and what we're having for lunch. Now. <laughs> Should we see the back? Yeah. Can you tell I'm hungry? Uh, <laughs> this does have a nice swirly design. Oh, that's over. beautifully Ellen done. Ellen did such too. a great job just spacing that and making that work. Oh, and I love, that's a tone on tone print, so it's mm -hmm. got a little movement in the fabric as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like solids, but I like prints. Yes. All right. All right. All right, the next one we've got is the Go Climbing Tulips Throw Quilt. Now this one's by Mary Ann Fontana, Fontana Originals. So once again, Mary Ann's taken that background, made it solid, so you really see the shape of the block. Yes. And Again, this is such a cute little block. The stems are made with strip dies and six inch cube. Yes. yes. Canyon, right? Yes. Okay. And it's interesting because when she does do the background color like this, that's when you see that full blown tulip right. yeah. shape, those, the four petals that are right. really opened up. And she again used batiks like Shannon did. I thought that was really mm -hmm. pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you could make your stems smaller if you wanted to, oh, but sure. I love it like this. I love Chunky, it's fabulous. I actually like the whole idea of this design with the um, with flowers, and you could do different blocks, you know, kind of use the same stem idea. Maybe even, mm -hmm. like I'm thinking about, like a, you know, if you had a specific wall in a room and you could extend it out and have a whole field of flowers. Oh, oh that would be fun. Well, and Shannon showed us how to make a daffodil. Right, right, right. right. So, and it would be fun like as a table runner as well, because you could have, you know, one side and different sure, sides right. be the flowers. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, it'd be a great challenge. How many flowers yeah. can you make yeah. out of uh, yes. cubes and dyes and yeah. yes. bobs? So oh, that's all right. a great one. It's beautiful. And next we have the Tulip Time Wall Hanging by our good friend Susie Webster of Webster Quilts. Okay. And I Sorry. love this because this is such a modern version. Right. I right. love it when we take these classic, classic blocks and we turn them into such a modern piece of mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. And again, here's those partial blocks down here. And then you have the full blocks in the center. I just think it's such a pretty design mm -hmm. and a great like weekend project. Yeah. You know, it's great not way to that use many blocks. Yeah. yeah. And the quilting on this is magnificent. We're gonna have to take a really good look at that yeah. because she's really Here I can show she's you. really painted the picture with her thread on this one, I think. Right. And thread color choice too. Yes. Right. She changed it up on the back, yeah. you can see. Very pretty. It's lovely. So great, great options and Absolutely. download the patterns today. That's right. There All the patterns are available as free downloads at AccuQuilt's website, AccuQuilt.com. So be sure you download those, just like Lynn said. You'll get your patterns that way before your die arrives. You'll be ready to go. All right. I hate to ask, but Lynn, which quilt are you taking with you? I'm uh, taking this one because I'm now I'm like truly inspired okay. by how many how many, flowers how many flowers you can make. And what would this look like if we doubled the length of it or made it yeah, even longer? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's lots of I think, options. I think take put this in the background. I think you've got one right yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Oh, that sure one. Okay, so I will go ponder that. Right. Okay. You go, you go work Should on that. Write a little pattern. Have, have a great rest of the show. All right, quilters, our good friend from Timeless Treasure really wanted to make sure that your creativity blooms with this new die. So they provided two stunning yeah. selection of fabrics for us to give away. And Erica, does this look so familiar? It looks so familiar. This is this fun pattern that it, Gina created. It is, it is. And I love it. I love how the teal and the yellows play together. Cheddar. Cheddar. 
There you go, right there. I knew. All right, the winner of the first lovely selection of fabric is, drum roll please. It's Pat B from Emigrant Montana, congratulations. And the winner of the second selection of fabric is, drum roll please. Valerie A of Etowah, Oklahoma, congratulations. congratulations. This is lovely, and you know that too really matches Lynn's shirt really well. It does, well. I'm surprised she doesn't leave with well, fabric as make well. Make sure she doesn't get a hold of that. All right. A huge thank you to Timeless Treasures for sponsoring today's show. This fabric is perfect for creating a bouquet of full-blown tulip blocks. And speaking of beautiful bouquets, quilters, the time has come. We ask which expert project is your favorite and it is time to announce the winner. And honestly, Erica, I loved both of I the projects of in so many different ways. Yes, they were very, mm -hmm. very different. I love it when our experts do that. When I do it's too. so different I do too. and you go, oh, that one's this way and oh, okay. The but, more inspiration, the better. Right. But the team has counted all of your votes and the winner is big drum roll, please. As predicted, it's bold. Congratulations. <laughs> they couldn't decide any more no. than we could. No, and you know, you and I talk about that. We talk about color and we talk about adding other blocks. And so, you know, the cube and the box right. guys, it's just great. All right, quilters, we have plenty of great deals available for you on our website, including ones for this beautiful, bright, and flowery dye. We do indeed. To get your order in, open a new tab in your browser, type in accuquilt.com slash party to see go to the site, see the offers, and place that order. You can also use the code SPRINGSHIP, S-P-R-I-N-G-S-H-I-P, to earn free shipping if you live in the contiguous U.S. on any online order that's $100, $125 or more. That's right. So think about this. Get the die with the mat. Yes. And throw yourself in a clapper. Oh, there you go. Okay. There you go. That's perfect. But if you already have become a member of our wonderful AQ Circle Plus Premium Membership Program, you will always receive free shipping and plenty of other benefits as well. You can learn all about them and join on our website. All right, it's time for us to get ready for our next show. We hope that today's launch party was just what you needed to let your creativity flourish. That's right, see you next time. Thanks for watching our show. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and look for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can visit the events page on AccuQuilt's website for more details on upcoming shows. And while you're there, check out the blog for tips, tricks, tutorials, and inspiration galore. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Don't forget to check out our events page to see all our upcoming events. You can enter your email to sign up for notifications for upcoming events. You'll receive an event reminder email before every show. Signing up for our events means you're entered to win a door prize that we'll give away during the show, so watch to see if you won. And be sure to join me every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. We have tons of fun. Tomorrow, the lovely Eric and I will be starting the Go Scrappy Star Log Cabin Quilt for the second 2023 AQS and AccuQuilt Along series. And join us every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for more launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be having a scrap family trunk show. We hope to see you there. And if you're gonna be in Paducah for the quilt show in a few weeks, stop by and say hello while you're there. AccuQuilt is hosting the lounge.